today is uh, Rosh Hashanah, as I told, two days of uh, uh, you know, uh, of uh, Jewish uh, New Year, which is the I would say it's the start of their civil New Year, Tishrei, Tishrei one and two. So today is the second day, and uh, there are two. New Year, which they usually do. One is the civil New Year, which starts from yesterday today, and then God ordained them the start of Passover. That's the start of the year. That is in Nisan. That is somewhere in April, March, April. That sort of time. It starts from Passover first. Like uh, how we have two births: one our physical birth, and one is our spiritual birth. We should <laughs> remember. Our life should revolve around both these truths. Amen. So uh, uh, it's a very important occasion. Uh, Pastor, do we need to uh, look at the Jewish terms still? Is it really needed? Many people have asked me this question, and I want to tell you we have to. Uh, receive we have received grace so that we will learn more about Jesus and never forget Jesus was born in a Jewish family he was not born in a, any other family he was born in a Jewish family as the scriptures said he was born in the tribe of Judah he was born as the son of the Virgin Mary and uh, all what we see revolves around Jesus. Amen. This coronavirus also <laughs> revolves around the story of Jesus. He's the God of history. He's the God of history and he's doing, still doing something beautiful in our life. Amen. So uh, it's a very important season. Uh, I thank God that uh, 5780 uh, is gone and 5781. So Rosh Hashanah is also the anniversary of creation of man creation of man. So the Jewish community believe that today is the day that Adam was created. So how many of you are happy that you were uh, mankind came into existence in this day through the uh, genealogy which we read in the Bible. So today was the day when Adam was created. Adam means mankind. Mankind started. So it's been according to them 5, 7, 8, 1 years old our time. Pastor, what about the dinosaurs? There are millions of years. Well, that's a different story. We will not talk about it today. But what we have is the story of five, seven, eight, one years in the Bible. Amen. So, uh, Rosh Hashanah is also called as the festival of trumpets, feast of trumpets. And uh, it's very important that we understand the spiritual truths from uh, the word of God. All right, so if you all can uh, uh, write down the notes, you can even on your window screens if you can, so that uh, uh, if you feel that is comfortable, otherwise it's okay. Uh, I want to uh, once again share my screen uh, so that uh, you will have a catch of what we are talking today. Rosh, Rosh Hashanah, look at the spelling, it's not rash. It's not a crash, it's Rosh Hashanah 5781. And you can see a rabbi having a shofar, it's a ram's horn. Shofar is a ram's horn. And uh, well, I also wanted to let you know about uh, uh, First Thessalonians. Okay, does a New Testament believer have to have an eye on the Jewish calendar? Yes. Read first, the, the first Thessalonians 5 and verse 1. This is just for you to understand. So that our mind blockages will go. Some people will say, Pastor, why are you telling about Jewish things here? Well, I, I paid the price to, <laughs> to understand this and to understand the concepts and grasp the deeper spiritual truths about what all we are doing. So first Thessalonians 5 and verse 1 and 2. Can somebody read it for me, please? Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. 
Look at that. For about times and dates or seasons in, in some translated seasons. So, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. Means what? They already know it. They already know it. They already know which time they are in. Somehow this lockdown has brought us to a understanding that time is not there. We all wake up someday. We have somehow lost the time sense. Friends, come back to learn about God's timing. Today is a new calendar in God's, uh, in God's time. Hallelujah. A new year. A new Jewish year. A new year where he's looking at things. He's evaluating today at many things. What is God doing in heaven today? He's doing many, many things. And some things I will tell you a glimpse today. I will show you from the word of God. All right. Rosh Hashanah, the meaning. Rosh Hashanah means head of the year. So how you start this year will determine how you go through. So thank God. Yesterday itself, many, you should have come for that evening prayer. You could have started it well, but at least today, some of us are here. Praise the Lord. You are going to have a blessed year in the presence of God. How you start Rosh Hashanah will determine how you move through the year. Lift your hands and say, Lord God, thank you that I am healed here. Thank you that I am provided well for. I am protected well. Thank you, Lord, that you're feeding me with deep spiritual truths. Thank you, Lord, that I have a pastor still. Thank you, Lord, that I have a body of believers to commune, to fellowship. Hallelujah. To call us brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord, that I have a house to dwell. Thank you, Lord, that, Lord, I'm not in any major calamity today, all because of your grace. And I know that this year you will carry me through. Hallelujah. Somebody thank him. Lift your hands and praise him. Everybody praise him. Wherever you are, let all hands be lifted up and say, Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We worship you. This year, Rosh Hashanah, we want to start by praising you. Your glory, your anointing, your praise, your glory. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. If you can speak in tongues, get anointed. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled. With the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Shatara Baradara Shandara Dara. He Kalaba Shandara Dara Dara. If God has gifted you with tongues, come on, talk to talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Let your inner man. Let your inner man be strengthened. Let your inner man be strengthened. Let your inner man be strengthened. Hallelujah. Shatara Bala Bara Shagara Dara Bara. Lord, I come to you in this Rosh Hashanah. Hallelujah. I get filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the anointing. Be filled with the grace of God. Be filled with the glory of God. Be filled with the anointing of God. Be filled with the new anointing and new spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Old things are gone. Old year is gone. It's a new year. How will you start it? It will continue. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for keeping us healed, Lord. When a pandemic, deadly pandemic is, hallelujah, wrecking the lungs and lives of people. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us breath in our lungs to say, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, you gave us breath in our lungs to say, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you gave us, hallelujah, spiritual fervor. Hallelujah, that we can open the scriptures and dwell in your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. On Rosh Hashanah, they read Genesis 22. There are two days, as I told you. Yesterday, they read from Genesis 20 and 21. Today, they read from Genesis 22. So, I request uh, Sister Priya, if she can help us in uh, reading Genesis uh, 22. We will join with her. Uh, I think you can take your class if you, if you have forgotten your class. Hallelujah. By the time all of us will come to Genesis 22. Genesis 22 is also known as Akida. Akida means uh, sacrificing of Isaac. So we will do as, as recorded through the generation. It will be a blessing to us in our spiritual life. So all of you take your Bibles. All of us come to Genesis 22. Sister Priya will read, lead us in reading this wonderful scripture uh, from the word of God. Okay. Um, can you hear me, Pastor? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Genesis chapter 22. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, 
take your son your only son isaac whom you love and go to the region of moria sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains i will tell you about early the next morning abraham got up and saddled his donkey he took with him two of his servants and his son isaac when he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering he set out for the place god had told him about on the third day abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance he said to his servants stay here with the donkey while i and the boy go over there we will worship and then we will come back to you abraham abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son isaac and he himself carried the fire and the knife as the two of them went on together isaac spoke up and said to his father abraham father yes my son abraham replied the fire and wood are here isaac said but where is the lamb for the burnt offering abraham answered god himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering my son and the two of them went on together when they reached the place god had told him about abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it he bound his son isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son but the angel of the lord called out to him from heaven abraham abraham here i am he replied do not lay a hand on the boy he said do not do anything to him now i know that you fear god because you have not withheld from me your son your only son abraham looked up and there in a thicket he saw a ram caught by its horn he went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son so abraham called that place the lord will provide and to this day it is said on the mount of the lord it will be provided the angel of the lord called to abraham from heaven a second time and said i swear by myself declares the lord that because you have done this and you have not withheld your son your only son i will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me then abraham returned to his servants and they set off together for beersheba and abraham stayed in beersheba some time later abraham was told milka is also a mother some time later abraham was told milka is also a mother she has borne sons to your brother nahor who's the first born but his brother kemiel the father of aram kesed hazo pildash jidlaf and bethuel bethuel became the father of rebecca milka bore these eight sons to abraham's brother nahor his concubine whose name was ruma ha- also had sons teba gaham tahash and maka amen. amen may the lord add his blessing upon the reading of god's word everybody said Amen. Genesis 22 is very important. Everyone should know one of the chapters which people should know is Genesis 22. Paul frames his theology uh, through uh, through some of the verses in this chapter. So homework starting itself, I'm giving you read, meditate on this chapter this week. But it's very important that we need to learn this uh, scripture. A lot of things are there, and in this place, that place. Last week I told you. Abraham built an altar where Somebody tell speak to me Mount Moriah Yeah Mount Moriah and that is the same place where man was created that is the same place where Adam was created and in the same place Abraham built an altar in the same place next who built an altar Solomon yeah Solomon built an altar same place Solomon's temple altar stood in the same place and somewhere very close by our lord jesus became the altar became the sacrifice and he hallelujah became an offering for our sins and this is so crucial 
in understanding who Jesus is. Amen. So uh, in the first day of Rosh Hashanah, they speak about Isaac's birth. And in the second day of Rosh Hashanah, they speak about how Isaac yields himself to the Father's will, which is also our lifestyle, which should be our lifestyle. We should surrender ourselves to, to serve the Lord. Rosh Hashanah is all about serving God. All right. It's also called the Feast of Trumpets. It's, it's re, uh, the name is Yom Teruah. Uh, can somebody read Leviticus 23, 23? In Leviticus 23, we read about the Feast of the Lord. Uh, Leviticus 23, 23. Yeah. The Lord to Moses, yes. say to the Israelites, on the first day of the seventh month, you are to have a day of rest, a sacred assembly command, uh, commemorated with trumpets, blasts. Do okay. not regular, do, do no regular work, but present an offering made to the Lord by fire. Look at that. Seventh month, first day, gather, let there be sound of trumpets. It's called the Feast of Trumpets. Okay, now I want to ask you, what are the seven feasts which we read in the Bible? Now don't look at Leviticus 23. Somebody tell the first feast. Quickly. Passover. Passover, second. Uh, feast of Jains. Kotal Pandaga in Telugu, Pastor. Huh? Feast of Fruits. So, you know, not Feast of Fruits. In between that, there is something. Unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. Yeah. Good. So, third is Feast of First Fruits. Very good, Rahul. Fourth. We are all Pentecostal. So, Feast of. Pentecost. Say Pentecost. 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 Yeah, Feast of Pentecost or Shavuot, which we Shavuot. call. Shavuot is the fourth feast. Uh, these are in the spring feast. They, these four are spring feasts. Okay, spring. They, this happens in spring. And all these four are fulfilled already in Jesus. Jesus, in the night of Passover, an unleavened bread, he became a sacrifice for us. Feast of first fruits, he rose as first fruits. Amen. Feast of Pentecost, what happened? No. Yeah, talk. Huh? Parishuddhat Mabishekam. Ah, Parishuddhat Mabishekam happened on the feast of Pentecost, the 50th day after the Lord, uh, you know, uh, asked them to tarry. And so the 50th, uh, that's from uh, first fruits to. 50th, on the 50th day, uh, there was the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So all those four are fulfilled. Spring feasts are fulfilled. Then there are the three fall feasts. Fall feasts means which happens three. And those are, number one is Feast of Trumpets. Second is the Day of Atonement. Say Atonement. Day of Atonement. And then it's called Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles. Now these three are yet to be fulfilled. We are waiting for the real feast of trumpets to happen. Amen. When, when, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, when the angel of the Lord shall blow, blow his trumpet, you have to wait for that. All of you are waiting for promotion only. That's why the trumpet is not... <laughs> unless we are ready, God, you know, if he comes, how many of us will go? You are waiting for all the worldly things. We should look for the look above and wait. Lord, when will you come? When will you come? When will you come? All right, so it's very important. So Tishrei, the first month of civil calendar, I told you, while Nisan is the first month of the spiritual calendar, uh, Rosh Hashanah is followed by 10 days of repentance. So starting from today, the Jewish community go into a deliberate way of repentance. Teshua, they call it as. They, they, in, they inflict so, sorrow upon their soul. They think about what all they did, which was grieving to the Lord. It's good in one way, you know. I'm not telling we should wait for these 10 days to repent. But it's good that we have cultivated a heart of repentance. And how? It's called the days of awe. And then it finishes by the day of atonement. That is next Sunday. Next Sunday to next Monday is the day of atonement, which they believe that uh, the high priest, they don't have a high priest, but, but we have the high priest. We have Jesus. 
Hallelujah. He has already gone with his blood to the presence of the Lord. He is our great high priest. When we have it, how much more repented lifestyle, reoriented lifestyle, reconciled lifestyle should we have in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Uh, as I told you, it is, so, it is said to be the birthday of Adam or humanity. So happy birthday, humanity. Coronavirus will not wipe you away. God will fulfill us back to, he will reconcile us back to the second Adam, who is Jesus. Amen. 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 So 5780 to 5781, how was this transition? One of the key moments what happened is very prophetic, very prophetic. This is Jared Kushner. Who is Jared Kushner? Somebody? Trump's son in law. Oh, very good. Brother Dillu will get 1000 rupees from me for answering that question. So, but he also has a post, right? What is the position? I think he's the chief advisor or something like that. Me, uh, some. Advisor. That's, that's right. So he is uh, uh, the chief advisor. Now, what he has, can you see in his hand? That's the Torah scroll, scroll of Torah. You know, you 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 take it so hardly to take this leather-bound Bible. You know that leather-bound Bible, whatever is there is here. So he took and gave it to the Sheikh of Bahrain, the Torah scroll. It's so huge. Prophetically, very important. This has not happened. What is this showing? Jared Kushner is also a Jew. He's a Jew. He is an Israelite. He, he is like Moses in Trump's camp. You might be thinking, how come Trump, who was a, you know, whatever he, he was, but now he is into what is a, of course, some things he cracks here and there, but he's doing, he moved the embassy to Jerusalem. He moved the Jerusalem embassy. He moved, uh, he, uh, he gave the region annexation to, which is huge. And now what has happened is, what is this showing is Isaac and Ishmael coming together. Isaac and Ishmael that went ways, parted ways are coming together. Of course, Saudi Arabia is not in Saudi Arabia is not liking Bahrain doing these things and uh, there are a lot of politics, happening. but the Middle East is divided. UAE has declared open support for this move. It's real, real, it's, it's big. I still remember last time when we came back from uh, Israel, they didn't stamp uh, that we came to Israel because UAE will not have, allow us inside. So they had gave just a paper pass, but now it's valid. Now if you go to Israel, we can come back to UAE too. They have no problem if you go to Israel. In fact, they are going to welcome that, that sort of. So this is very huge what has happened. And I want to tell you, friends, if you are here, if you are longing to hear the trumpet sound, you will hear. If you are not longing to hear, if you are still busy with your worldly affairs, what will happen? We may miss it out. Only those who are ready to hear will hear the trumpet sound. And very much chances are there. Yesterday, I was looking whether God will come. Today, he may come. Well, I will tell the reality later. All right. 5780 was the year of pay. Pay is the mouth, year of the mouth. Last year, I remember speaking about this mouth and all of them are opening their mouth now, right? For the, <laughs> for the test swab. I are taking from the swab. Mouth, year of the mouth. It's, it's so, it shows the mouth. It shows the mouth. And uh, it was the pandemic year. And... Uh, 81 is pay alef. 81 is pay alef, and it shows in Jewish circles in Gematria, it shows either. It's a miraculous year. There'll be healing. Lift your hands and thank the Lord that there's going to be a healing this year. Somehow. Somehow. So, like how I said, I don't want the vaccine to heal me. I want the presence of the Lord to heal. Amen. Amen. If you stand. And for that to happen, we all should be plugged so much in God's word, in God's presence. Hallelujah. This is what a rabbi said. I will, he, he believes that this will be a year of miracles. There will be healing. And imagine if the Lord comes this year. <laughs> there will be a widespread healing. Amen. And also this Rosh Hashanah is happening on a Sabbath, which is yesterday. Yesterday was a Saturday. And this is a feast of trumpets. So everybody blows their shofar. But this time they could not blow because of the Sabbath. 
they do not do any work so when the rosh hashana falls on a sabbath it's it means that this year is holy and separated to god this year all of us in shelter house are declared to be holy and separated for god your priority will be for the kingdom your priority will be to hear god's word your priority will be to build god's kingdom your priority will be to be holy you are not going into 5781 with all the unwanted things but you are going in with a separated attitude with a holy attitude with a pleasant attitude it's a pleasant sabbath is pleasure sabbath is god's pleasure lift your hands and say i will live for god's pleasure this year i will live for god's pleasure because i am in the sabbath rest of the lord i shall have physical healing come on lift your hands and say i shall have physical healing i shall have emotional healing no 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 egyptian that came till 5780 will come at me this 5781 as i serve the lord Hallelujah the Lord will keep me as the apple of his eye. Amen. Hallelujah. I will obey the spiritual authority, the pastors, the elders, the brothers and sisters will be more close to me. I shall not have any bitterness. It's a year of forgiveness. These 10 days forgive everybody who hurt you. Bitterness should not be there. It's a new year. The God is doing something. Do you not perceive it? Can't you see Jared Kushner presenting the scroll to King of Bahrain? Isn't this two big brothers? Are you not knowing that something new is happening? May the Lord help us to hear that. Shofar is not blown, but this all when you blow the shofar, uh, you also coronate God as King. Avinu Malkinu. Avinu Malkinu means uh, God as Father and King. Avinu Malkinu. Everybody say Avinu Malkinu. Avinu Malkinu means God as Father and King. Lift your hands and say, Lord, you are our Father. You are our King. We coronate you as King. We do not have a shofar, but with our mouth as a trumpet, we declare Jesus as our King. Hallelujah! Come on, speak it out. Jesus is our King. Louder in your homes, wherever you are. Jesus is our King. Jesus is our God. Rosh Hashanah. He is our God, and let His kingdom come. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So blowing of the shofar has this significance. It means as you blow the shofar, you say, "I choose to be the servant of the king." So every Jew who blows the shofar will choose to be the servant of the king. The servant of the king. Are you serving the king, or is the king serving you? <laughs> yeah, many a time he said all the silly demands to the Lord. Never forget, he is king. He is the king. He is the king of majesty. He is the king of glory. And when you blow the shofar, I pray that this will have your experience every day, every morning. Say, Lord, I choose to be a servant. Your servant. I choose to be the servant of the king. And then the Jewish people go. I was hearing a rabbi yesterday. He was telling, this time we cannot blow shofar, which means I am also negated. That ego, pride, me is totally subservient. I'm. I'm not even worthy to blow a shofar for the king. that sort of he is king even though i don't blow the shofar this year so i is cancel lift your hands and say let him increase and let me decrease let him increase let jesus increase let all my ego die let all my pride die brother why are we rolling our muscles still i used to remember telling uh, in the church when we all gather together yeah muscle come kira purinja chellya iniyad At least by now we should understand who God is and who we are. Lift your hands and say, Lord, if you give me this year, I will serve you. God is looking at this at this moment. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you for giving me this year. Write me in the book of life. Say, write my name. Lift your hands and say, I write my name. Write my name in this book of life. Book of life. I choose to serve you. Whatever, however means. If you want to sweep the sanctuary, if you want me to. Uh, Lord, pray for somebody. I choose to be your servant. I'm your servant. Amen. First day, what happens is we read the birth of Isaac. Second day, Akida. Akida is called the sacrifice of Isaac. So that's what ideally should happen. Isaac was sacrificed on the altar, and we Jesus also did that in the same. And we who are of the Lord Jesus should be ourselves on the altar. So if there is somebody. uh next to you say don't get up from the altar don't run away from the altar come on tell are you telling i hope you are telling it don't run away from the altar stay there 
let the lord use you let the lord use your prayer life come on talk talk to one another say let the lord use your prayer life let the lord use your service for king for his service this year amen what we have learned in the last months should make us more charitable and loving make your position right in the presence of the lord amen so that's what it is blowing of the shofar uh, means i humbled myself i am see there is no extent to which you can humble write it down there is no extent to which you can humble you can keep going lower lower and lower and lower as you go higher and higher in your spiritual life amen the higher and higher you go in your spiritual life the lower and lower you become humble you can write down that's a principle all right now there are three things what happens in rosh hashana these days number one god is a righteous judge that's what the jewish community believe and i believe also because it's there in the bible god is a righteous judge amen uh, in hebrews 12 23 we read god is the judge of all he's the righteous judge of all he's a righteous judge of all so today what the jewish believe, people believe is god opens the book of life book of death and book of in between <laughs> so it seems uh, they he evaluates all the character and those who uh, well this might be tension for some of you but that's how it is they believe if you uh, those who are right enough he will help them to live in this full year the book of life he will write the book of life well that's not uh, there in the bible anywhere in our scripture but that's what they believe in talmud in midrash is just for your understanding i believe of course god has a time for all of us uh, and uh, wicked he will mark them also for destruction for in the coming year he will go through all our deeds come before the lord today it's some rosh ashan he's a righteous judge because it's on this day that he sat as a judge for adam also he expelled him out of the uh, garden as he asked for mercy so uh, is the day of judgment Uh, for all of mankind like how adam was judged and justice was done we need to know that all our deeds matter before the lord and he judges righteously here also so today probably he may look at us in my view every day he looks at us but there are some key days of course there could be we do not know we have this inherited legacy from uh, the jewish uh, sources can we read genesis 18 25 genesis 18 and verse 25 so today god is looking at our work he's looking at how how we are starting this year just say lord i am yours i want you I, i i surrender before you i will not have any muscle power i will not run behind any money power i will run behind the word power amen genesis 1825 surely you wouldn't do such a thing destroying the righteous along with the wicked why you wouldn't be treating the righteous and the wicked exactly the same surely you wouldn't do that should not the judge of all the earth do what is right judge of all the earth abraham is telling judge of all the earth shouldn't be be doing all things right so today let's go and say lord jesus come on everybody lift your hands and say lord righteous judge you cannot destroy the righteous with the wicked hallelujah you cannot do it oh god you cannot do it oh god come on everybody the righteous and the wicked cannot uh, have the same yardstick you are the righteous judge lord wickedness you do not please in wickedness hallelujah yes lord but lord we pray that we will judge ourselves but you are the righteous judge you are the righteous judge look at first corinthians 11 and verse 31 a new testament concept of this first corinthians 11 31 but if we judged ourselves uh, we would not come under judgment when we judge ourselves we will not come under judgment yeah when we are judged by the lord we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned with the world said that so this this is uh, specifically related to a thing that is happening in the church church of corinth in the church of corinth they start they uh, have the lord's table they whenever they gather they believe the lord's supper so uh, what used to happen is the rich ones the masters used to come and do it separately there were classes <laughs> divisions so paul is listening uh, this story from the people and uh, he's writing an epistle hey 
can't you wait for one another we are all one and in the church of corinth many died and paul attributes that to the wrong way of functioning in the body of christ say wrong way of functioning in the body of christ it's not the right way if you are not praying for your co believer remember you will be judged if you are not praying for your brother if i am not praying for brother nirmal i will be judged that's what the bible says so uh, uh, it's 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 to people so uh, these days churches big church big churches nobody know who is who is worshiping next to him so that's why we are having that family concept trying to bring it up at least we are not looking for count we want whomever god has brought us in a church to grow to heaven to grow to heaven and go to heaven <laughs> grow to heaven grow to heaven unless you grow to heaven you won't go to heaven write it down unless you grow to heaven you won't go to heaven that's how it is uh, first corinthians 11 and verse 30 that is why many among you are weak and sick and the number of you have fallen asleep look at that because of wrong way of functioning in god's church many are sick many are weak and many fallen asleep means died lot of funerals were there thank god we are having less of that i want to give glory to the lord he is extending that's all small kindness as i say small kindness so function well as a believer as a as a co believer in the shelter house family now it's worship from anywhere concept okay let's let's keep it like this worship from anywhere you are part of your local church here you have a pastoral family you ought to support the pastoral family you ought to support one another in prayer amen that's how it is. so god is our righteous judge second second truth about rosh hashana god who delights in repentance repentance when is the last time you felt really bad and turned to god really bad means i i went wrong but i want to turn to god that ha- that should happen in our lives god delights in repentance and that's what from starting from today there are 10 days of all or repentance teshuva is what they call teshuva teshuva means repentance have i grieved the lord have i gone away from the lord including me starting from me is the head of the year is the start of the year rosh hashana means start of the year have i grieved him if i have grieved him i want to turn back to god amen there's a beautiful saying the christian who has stopped repenting has stopped growing a w pink said that the christian who has stopped repenting so ideally we should be in this posture this young man i hope all of us will be in that post coming days 10 days if you can at least one day of repentance we are planning to have a fasting prayer at least one day we will we'll decide next week but next sunday evening onwards as a day of atonement not because it's day of atonement but we want to probably we can start one or two days of fasting uh, next sunday but these days orient your lives back it's a new year if you do not have a family prayer every day start it start it back. start this year well this rosh hashana well if you are not if husband is having one time of meal wife is having another time of meal children having no come together at the table and pray a blessing over the food and then eat or if it is uh, you know however family prayer eating together giving to the poor so who delights in repentance can we read ezekiel 1823 quickly ezekiel 1823 someone someone else can take psalm 51 16 and 70 another person can take mark 1 and 15 another person can read revelation 3 and verse 3 here we go he delights in repentance do i take any pleasure in the death of the wicked declares a sovereign lord rather am i not pleased when they turn from their ways and live look at that jesus is god is telling i do not want to destroy the wicked he i don't i don't want to do i am the author of life i don't want to destroy but i delight in their repentance i want them to come back i want to i want them to draw back to myself i want them to draw back to my presence so many people will ask why is this coming here? god delights in repentance repent it's not late 
It's never too late to repent. Amen. Come back to our repentance is not just looking at your sin, but it is looking at your sin and looking at the sun together. You look at your sin and look at your son. Look at the son of God. That's repentance. Turning to Jesus. Psalm 51, 16 and 17. <clears throat> You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. You do not after, despise. After David sinned, he's telling, You want burnt offerings? I would have brought it. Who? He has everything. Wow, how much burnt offerings? He can bring all the bulls. But he, for a moment, looked at the heart of God. I can say a hallelujah, but I cannot give me. Isn't it? How many of you know it's easy to say a hallelujah without giving yourself? It is. God delights in you, not your offering. So David is clearly telling, you want burnt offering, I would have, but when I look at your heart, you want me. But now I'm broken. Yes, I took Bathsheba. David, in all probability, Brought up Bathsheba as his daughter because they were all together, you know. Bathsheba's father and grandfather all are David's friends. So when this child was born, probably David in all probably was an uncle, like an uncle figure <laughs> to Bathsheba. But this is the same uncle who violated Bathsheba. Same uncle. There are many uncles like this in Christianity who abused their disciples and their remorse. The uncles have to turn back to the Lord. Jerry Falwell Jr., who is the president of Liberty University. He was the president of the largest Christian university. He was caught in a compromising position. He had to resign. Stinking scandals. Say stinking scandals. Stinking scandals. Friend, if we are not having our relationship right with God, we will go wrong in our relationship with one another. Write it down. If we are not in a right relationship with God, we will go Wrong in our relationships with one another. Starting from your wife. Come back to God. Rosh Hashanah message is clear. Get back to God. Remove all those filthy images from your computer. Remove all filthy things that excite you from your gadgets in the name of Jesus. And burn it and throw it off. And come back to God. Stand against corruption. Stand against drugs. Stand against anything that pulls you away from the presence of the Lord. Somebody said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. What is God's sacrifice? A contrite spirit. The moment you are contrite, he knows. He will come to you. So David is telling, for this big sin I cut, did, I should ideally offer the, all the bulls. But that's not what God needs. My heart is broken. And that's a living sack. And he's like, created me a clean heart of God and renew a right spirit. What is the message of the New Testament? Mark 1.15, Jesus, message of Jesus. These days people say, no need to repent. Once you're in Jesus, shut them off from your TV. Don't go to them. Don't go closer to them. We need to repent. Blessed is the one who have a character of repentance. Amen. Mark 1.15, the message of Jesus. The time has come, he said, the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. Repent and believe the good news. Repent. Come out from all what you are in. Come out from the world you are in and enter into the world of God. That's what it means. Be, believe the gospel means enter into the world of God. Come out from all you believed that you thought as the world. In fact, the world what you see is vanity. The salary you earn is vanity. The Jobs that you have now is vanity. It will all go away. The degree will not save you from virus. Money will not save you from virus. Muscle power will not save you from virus. Don't let your soul also to be destroyed along with the body. That's why we need our soul to be protected. And we need to come back to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Revelation 3 and verse 3. Go back to what you heard and believed at first. Hold to it firmly. Repent and turn to me again. If you don't wake up, I will come to you suddenly as unexpected as a thief. Look at that. As a thief, he will come unexpectedly. So he's telling, repent. 
in revelation the the idea is repent to the churches he is telling repent but where are the repentance in the churches these days starting from the high level of spiritual authority the lowest level people are looking for the right word let's return back to god amen return repent otherwise he will come like a thief the day of the lord to it's it's bad for the wicked and it's good for the righteous amen the day of the lord is coming very soon finally it's the day of rejoicing seasons of rejoice hallelujah if you cultivate if you understand this knowledge that he is a judge of all things this rosh hashana probably sometime in rosh hashana probably jesus can come i believe if he plays with times and seasons because it's a feast of trumpets yeah it's a feast of trumpets it's a feast of trumpets it it doesn't mean that other season he will not come no but if god can call it short the all probability for god to come on rosh hashana is big it's big because it's the feast of trumpets and who is blowing the the trumpet matthew 24 30 and then at last the sign that the son of man is coming will appear in the heavens and there will be deep mourning among all the peoples of the earth and they will see the son of man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory and he will send out his angels with the mighty blast of a trumpet and they will gather his chosen ones from all over the world from the farthest ends from the earth and heaven amen hallelujah this this is, you should know <laughs> Okay, First Thessalonians four sixteen. Quickly, just the first part. First Thessalonians four sixteen. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. Trumpet the... call of God. Trumpet call of God. Shofar. That's called shofar. Shofar blast of the Lord. And the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we who are alive. shall be caught up her pazo shall be caught up together and so we shall ever be with him hallelujah this is our hope friends so don't be afraid don't be upset is your soul okay your discipline will be okay say if my soul is okay my spiritual discipline will be okay you don't need pastor to say come for prayer <laughs> you will you be there you will come for family prayer you need thousand fellows to bring you in fellow if you are not coming to your family prayer and sitting and you are expecting trumpet call <laughs> christian life is not like how you think brother it's very easy and it's all difficult also easy if you give it to the son and give it let him let him live it let him live through us difficult if you try living christian life is difficult if you try living it up christian life is easy if you let the son live in you hallelujah Amen. I feel so happy. I think Brother Nirmal is here, and uh, my podium and chair. I think uh, there is a special ladder in heaven. Is <laughs> Hallelujah! Somebody said, Amen. "Amen." Praise the Lord. The word has come, and the Lord will will help us. So full feast and with Sabbath tabernacle, God will cause us to rejoice in Him. Probably in Rosh Hashanah. Probably He can come today, but the question is, will we be with Him if He comes? can we read once again psalm 30 and verse 11 just psalm 30 and verse 11 and we will close hallelujah amen yes turned my wailing into dancing you removed my sad cloth and clothed me with joy you clothed me with joy so if you have repentance he will clothe us with joy if you don't have repentance you will look at you will look for other sources for fun and uh, ecstasy drugs and alcohol and all these things but if you have the cultivate in your spirit a repentant spirit god will clothe you with joy hallelujah hallelujah philippians 4:4 4 says rejoice in the lord and again i say to you rejoice the lord is at hand that's what it is we will draw closer to the lord will you just give your heart to jesus and say lord i want to bless you i want to thank you thank you for teaching me beautiful truths from your scripture this rosh Hashanah, Hallelujah! We want to thank you. We want to praise you. 
Hallelujah. Lord, we know that you are the righteous judge. All our deeds are before you. Forgive our sins, Lord. Can we say forgive? If you can kneel down, just do that. Go ahead and cultivate that heart of kneeling down before the Lord. Kneel down and say, Lord, I'm sorry for hurting you. I'm sorry for grieving you. Write my name in the book of life. Write my name and seal it in the book of life. Hallelujah. That I will never lose it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is healing in the blood of Jesus. I have gone I'm in my own ways. But this Rosh Hashanah, I come to you. Lord, I long to hear the trumpet sound. I want to lead a disciplined life. This year is my year of service for you. I will serve you as I blow. Hallelujah. My uh, shofar through my mouth. And as I declare my praises to you, I declare your praise i declare your blessing hallelujah 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 praise the lord come on open your hearts and say lord i'm sorry i'm sorry i increase my prayer life increase my meditation life increase my church life increase my community life increase my hallelujah service to you increase it hallelujah 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 these are deep truths oh god i want you to touch me i want you to hallelujah anoint me anoint me with new oil come on as you pray the lord is anointing you his glory is over you in the name of jesus hallelujah 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 thank you lord father we thank you that you accepted our repented heart a contrite spirit you will not despise we thank you lord bless our families bless our children bless our church families bless our community as we repent and come to you we repent and come to you we turn to you there is nothing greater than our spiritual life Help us to orient our focus towards that this year. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.